Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I do weekly uploads on some of the most horrendous and mysterious cases around the world. So if you're a true crime fan like I am, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Before we get started today, I do want to take a quick second to give you guys a speculation warning because although I have tried to weed out the opinions and only use factual information, we have to be mindful that this is still the internet and even if you may think so, not everything you see is 100% true. Alright guys, now that we got the boring stuff out of the way, let's get straight to it because this is one sad and sinister case. For the sake of today's video, we are going to Florida, and more specifically, Osceola, Florida. So in late September of 2015, a missing persons report was filed with the Osceola Police Department in regards to 79-year-old Aura Lee Hawkins. Aura's daughter Judy told the detectives that the last time she seen her mother was on Friday, September 19th, when her mom stopped by her house to vent about the problem she was having with her other daughter, Amy Day, who was Judy's sister. Aura told Judy that she was just getting really fed up with not having any help around the house because, you know, she was allowing her adult child to live with her, yet she was still having to pay for all of the household expenses to include groceries. And not to mention, Amy wasn't even helping her cook the food or clean up the house and this woman is 80 years old. What was even more weird is that after Aura left, Judy got a phone call from her and Aura was telling her that she was leaving town and going on a trip for six months, but number one, Judy knew that was extremely unusual and number two, when Aura called, she was really, really upset and crying, so Judy knew something wasn't right immediately. So um, let's go back to Saturday evening or Saturday night. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you heard from your mom? Um, between 8.20, 8.25. That's when you received that phone call, which mm -hmm. was a little bit, um, you said she was crying. She wasn't bawling, she was just kind of a, a more of a, it was like a whimper, you know, type, you know, and, you know, she told me, she told me she loved me, um, and that she would call me as soon as she got a chance. I took it as if you know, she was going to miss me or, you know, I mean, I didn't read too much into it. I may mean, should have, but I didn't. You know, my mind was probably five, you know, somewhere else, but I, just, I, I didn't read much into it. My mom, when she says she loves you, you know, sometimes she cries. When she leaves to go to North Carolina, before she leaves, she tells you she loves you, she'll cry. So, I mean, I didn't really read that much into it. During that phone call, did she give you a timeline when she was supposed to be back or how long she was going to be gone? She didn't really give me a timeline. Um, my understanding is she gave my sister a timeline. And then after you finished the phone call with your mom, did you and your sister talk? Did yeah, my sister called me. Apparently after she went down to mom's house, banged on the door, she didn't answer. Judy called me asked me if I had heard from mom. I told her yes. She asked me what she said and I told her and Judy told me she told her the same thing and that but that she had said she was going to be gone for six months and that there was no way that mom would miss Christmas with her grandson. The following day, which was Saturday, September 20th, Judy reported Aura missing, then went over to her house to see if she could find anything that might say where she was at and eventually Judy found her driver's license and a credit card of hers in a locked bag. But before we get into all that, I want to give you guys a little bit of a backstory on Amy. So long before this incident, Amy regularly greeted governors, senators, and even U.S. presidents arriving in Central Florida because she served as a personal assistant and confidant to leaders of the Greater Orlando Aviation Administration for years. And after that, she took over the billing department at the Orlando International Airport. She was also married to a former Osceola County property appraiser whose name was Bob Day, but the couple divorced in 2011 after she moved home to live with her mother, Aura, in Osceola County. After the divorce happened, Amy started showing increasingly erratic behavior that prompted the airport officials to order her to take a drug test in 2009. 
Although the fit for duty exam did not detect illegal drugs, Amy still accepted a $20,000 severance check and resigned weeks later after 19 and a half years of service. After this, she was hired as a 911 dispatcher for Osceola County in May of 2010, but unfortunately ended up getting fired for three DUI drug tests. It honestly seems like prescription drug abuse had taken over her life at this point and sent her on a downward spiral because shortly after midnight on July 10th, Amy crashed her car near St. Cloud and repeatedly told the officers that she only wanted to get a taco from down the street, but she was slurring her words the whole entire time. Even though she was charged with a DUI, she still kept her job for another month, but in late August, she got arrested twice within two days for more DUI drug charges, so of course, she ended up getting fired. While all three blood tests showed no alcohol, they did find at least four pain, anxiety, and stress medications, including Valium, in her system. Honestly, she ended up getting pretty lucky on that because she was only sentenced to 22 days in jail plus probation due to a plea agreement she made with a prosecutor that would reduce the DUI charges to reckless driving. Um, anytime I can help somebody, yeah. I, I, I have absolutely no problem talking about it. I understand. But you know, it's not against the law to have a substance abuse program. I know. Or, or problem. And we also, I do have a misdemeanor because of it. <laughs> but we also, we also, <laughs> we do also offer programs and stuff, you know, for that. Right. that and, and they're actually, they've been proven that we have pretty decent ones. So if there's any reason you're worried about telling us about one, you know, we no, can do whatever I'm, we can. No, absolutely not. Um, okay. I, I mean, I know mine was um, the Larica. And, um, I don't I, even know what that is. It's uh, for um, it's FDA approved. It's for fibromyalgia and um, convulsions yeah. and epilepsy. And um, the doctor that I was going to at the time had me taking three times the amount milligrams that yeah. the pharmaceutical company recommended. Mm -hmm. And this reason the judge I had doc I had Judge O'Brien. Okay. Um, I spent 22 days in jail. Got my bail hearing and then. I spent almost a year on house arrest and Judge O'Brien had had enough with the prosecution because they kept changing prosecutors. Mm -hmm. So when my court case came up, she told him to make a deal, dropped it down to the DUI and um, gave me 100 hours of community service. All right, now I think I've told you guys enough about Amy's history, so let's get back to the story. Like I said earlier in the video, Aura was reported missing on September 20th, 2015. And just a day later, on September 21st, while the authorities were searching for her, they found her body under a mound of dirt decorated with plastic flowers in the backyard of her own home. Authorities reported that Aura Hawkins' body was found wrapped in garbage bags, a pink blanket, a rope, and a coax cable. By the time they found Aura's body, detectives had already talked to Amy some, trying to figure out what all she knew and if she had anything to do with her disappearance, and Amy told them that her mother had moved to Colorado with a woman named Rose, whom she had met at the Eastern Avenue Baptist Church in St. Cloud. Detectives ended up going to the church that Aura supposedly met Rose at. But no one at the church knew or even heard of anyone named Rose, so that is when they really started to question Amy's story. On Tuesday, September 22nd, the autopsy came in and showed that Aura died from head trauma. The same day that the autopsy came back, a childhood friend of Amy's that now lived out of state, whose name was Melissa, called into the sheriff's office wanting to know if Amy's father, Ed, was okay. Ed was a retired Osceola police officer for 20 years, so the detective told her that he was alive and well, but asked why she was interested. Melissa then informed the officer that she spoke with Amy on September 18th, and Amy told her that her father had passed away from a massive heart Hello, attack. this is Melissa. Good afternoon, Melissa. My name is Detective Joel Guevara with the Osceola County Sheriff's Office in Kissimmee, Florida. I was given by yes. your number by my, my dispatch. Yeah. Um, are you the lead detective? Can you detective? talk right now? Yes, yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. Are you the lead detective that's on the case? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. I'm out So, you. yeah. Well, I've, I'm in shock, as you can imagine. I'm just... Yes, ma'am. Okay. Everybody is. So, 
Well, let me just tell you a little bit. First off, has anybody checked to see if Ed Hawkins, her father, is okay? I, I need confirmation that she told me he was dead too. This was on Friday. I need to know that she said he had a massive heart attack a month ago. Is Ed Hawkins alive and well? Has anybody yeah, done a uh, welfare check? Uh, she stayed in the night, uh, one night, and I talked to him personally. She said that during the same conversation, Amy also told her that her mother, Aura, had passed away three months ago from a brain aneurysm and was buried in North Carolina next to her cousin. Call from her on Friday, this past Friday. Okay. And she's like, and I answered it, and I said, oh, hey, Amy, I'm sorry, I haven't talked to you in a while. And I said, well, let me tell you what's happened with me. I got away from that attorney that was overloading me with work that I couldn't stand. I moved my offices into Friedman Damiano, one of the biggest law firms in Cleveland. They're awesome. They treat me great. They don't overload me with work. They let me run my business out of their office. And I said, so I caught her up on what was going on with me. It took me about maybe 10, 15 minutes, 10 minutes of catching her up. And I said, what's going on with you? She goes, well, I've got, I've got something bad to tell you. I said, what? Okay. She says, my mom died. This was on Friday. Okay. I said, what do you mean? I'm like, what? She's like, she died. She told me she died three months ago. She said she died of a brain aneurysm. I got something else to tell you, Melissa. She says, dad died too. I said, okay. what? She said, dad died about a month ago of a massive heart attack at his home in Tennessee. And that I'm like, what is going on? And of course I'm like crying now because Ed and Lee were like parents to me. Mm -hmm. They were like second parents. So I'm crying. She's like, she, she, she didn't, she didn't, she, she didn't lose it while she was telling me this. She didn't, it, she didn't, she wasn't breaking down crying with me or anything. She's just talking while I'm crying. She said that her dad had a massive heart attack and that he was alone for six hours before Katie came home from work and found him and that he was already dead. And she went on to tell me that Judy didn't go to the funeral. She has, she said that Judy and her dad, she had been telling me that they had been beefing for like the last year. And that Judy didn't, attend, she was really upset with Judy like Judy didn't even attend his funeral and dad cut her out of the will and he gave it to me she said she inherited five hundred thousand dollars from her dad and three hundred thousand dollars from her mom's life insurance policy lastly Melissa told the officer that Amy said she was going to buy a round trip ticket to fly out and visit her on September 21st for several days because she said she wanted to catch up on each other's lives and renew their friendship with this new information, detectives found that Amy had used her mom's credit card on September 19th while her mom was missing in order to buy a $369 round-trip ticket on Spirit Airlines, leaving Orlando on September 21st and returning on September 25th. They also discovered that she used the same exact credit card to order $1,030 worth of merchandise from Walmart, which included a 50-inch flat-screen TV that a FedEx driver delivered days later while a deputy sheriff stood guard and yellow and black crime scene tape still surrounded the Hawkins home. What can you tell me about, there's been any recent purchases by you mom that you know of? Um, because th th there's some things that I need for you to help me explain and understand, okay? I know she bought some stuff from um, Walmart. Okay, do you know those things that she bought? That she bought? Um, I know she bought a uh, full-length mirror. Uh, TV. Okay. Um, and because of the she, the TV in her TV room is going out, and I think she bought some jewelry. Okay. How big was the TV that she bought? She bought a big, big one. I don't know exactly how big, but I know she was big, bigger than mine. What credit card she used to, to pay for that one? I'm not exactly sure, but I'm going to guess. What can you tell me about, 
there's been any recent purchases by you all that you know of? Amy just had very inconsistent stories for the detectives about the time when her mother disappeared. Like, for example, she told them that she saw her mother Saturday afternoon, but then left for Gainesville after to go visit her boyfriend. But when the police tried to track down her boyfriend using the phone number Amy gave them, the man who answered had no idea who Amy or Aura were. So clearly at this point, she's just making stuff up to give herself an alibi. When the investigators confronted Amy about the phone number, her response was, it's impossible and I'm not lying. Hmm, seems a little fishy to me. The day after the authorities found Aura's body, they arrested Amy for changing the details about where she was and who she was with during her mother's disappearance. And in November, she was indicted on charges of first degree murder, kidnapping with intent to inflict bodily harm, and aggravated abuse of an elderly or disabled adult, and the death of Aura Lee Hawkins. Once the trial started, the jurors spent about four days hearing the case. After about two and a half hours of deliberating, the jury returned their guilty verdicts, and according to the case records, the judge on the case then sentenced Amy to life in prison, which is exactly where she belongs, in my opinion. With that being said, we have reached the end of this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And also, leave me a comment on what case I should cover next. Okay, love you, bye!